what's up guys learning with rich here in this video we are going to uh, talk about design modeling in revit architecture 2021 okay so the purpose of this exercise is to explore some of the conceptual modeling options available in revit so the the intent is to have the framework of a model that could be used for let's say schematic design so earlier design design development or eventually construction uh, documents. So what we are going to do in this exercise is we're going to start a project based on a default architectural template and then we're going to link a CAD file then we are going to create a property line I'm going to show you how to do that and then we're going to create a topo surface and then we'll be creating a building pad okay so it's not that difficult, but this is very useful if you are preparing for the examination in Revit Architecture Certified Professional Certification. Okay, so let's get started. So like what I've said, we are going to just simply create a new project using an architectural template. So as you can see, I don't have one here. So I'm going to browse and then let's say I'll just use an Imperial units. So I go to the English Imperial folder and then look for default. If you have architectural template, just use that one. It's the same. So in my case, I'll just use default here and then I select here open and then OK. Okay, so now the first thing that uh, we are going to do is let's create a property line. Okay. So the property line that we will be creating will going to be based on the CAD file that we are going to link. So we are going to link a CAD file. So since I'll be doing a site modeling, so I'll go to the site plan. Okay, just go to the site plan and then maybe just hide your uh, base point there, the project base point. So just hide that one so we don't need that for this exercise. Oops hide elements all right so let's link first the cat file that we'll be using for this exercise so i go to insert link cat so we'll be using link okay so the difference between the import cat and then the link cat if you are using an xref in AutoCAD, it's just like that so basically linking is similar to having an xref in AutoCAD. when the original link file changes You'll be able to reflect this in your Revit when you reload the project. Okay? But the import CAD, <clears throat> you can't do that, but you can explode the CAD file in your Revit. Because link CAD, you cannot explode your CAD file and convert it to Revit elements. But if you're going to use an import CAD, you will be able to explode the CAD file and then convert it to a Revit element. Okay, but it doesn't update. So if you change the original file, you will not be able to reload these changes in Revit. Okay, so basically that's the difference. For this one, I'll just use link add. And then I'll go to my exercise folder. So I'm going to link this one. Now for this one, I'll use a fit. Okay, Unix. So the rest, it's default. Colors will going to be preserved. When you say preserved, the colors will be there. When you say invert, dark colors will become light colors. Light colors will become dark colors. So when you say black and white, it's black and white. Okay, so I'll just use preserve, use all the layers. All right, so let's open up this one. And there you go. So maybe I'll just move this elevation here below okay so we will be using this um, cat file to create the property lines okay so the property line can be found on the massing side and then from the modify side so there's your property line okay so create a property line in a plan view so you can create property lines by sketching or by entering a table of distances and bearings. So it's, it's up to you. So for this one, we are going to just sketch it. So I'll use the property line. 
So I'll just sketch it. But of course, you can also enter the distances and bearings if you already have the details of that from the surveyor. But I don't have that detail, so I'll just sketch it by myself. So I just click Create by Sketching. Okay, so let's say this will going to be my uh, property line. So how about I just put uh, Setback. So I'll just put peak lines here. I put an offset distance here of, let's say, uh, 5 feet. Okay. So I'll just offset this. Okay. So for example, that will going to be my property line. Okay. And then select. Oh, no. So make sure you close it. All right. So as you can see, it's not closed. So you can use the trim extent corner to close it. Make sure it's close, close, and then just finish. And there you go. So there is now your uh, property line. Okay. If you're going to click the property line, you'll be able to see the area of that particular property line. Okay. Now, the next thing that we'll be doing is I'm going to use the imported or the link CAD file to create the topo surface. Okay. So to do that, I'll go again to the massing inside and then there's the topo surface. So I'll use the topo surface here and then mm, there is a value here, 5 feet elevation of the topo surface. I'll just use that one. So I'll be using place on point. So I'm going to pick points. So let's say from here. Okay. So I'm just going to pick points. Let's say just like that. Of course, you can change the elevation of those points that you have placed. So let's say, for example, in this area here, I want this to be 6 feet. So select these two points and then change the elevation to 6 feet, right? So let's say for this side here, I want this to be 5.5. .5. So there's going to be the changes. So there's a contour that is happening there as you change the elevation of each point. All right, now after that, just select finish. There you go. So in 3D view, let's go check it out. So this is now how it looks like. You can type SD for shaded view, so be able to see your top of surface. There you go. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to create a building pad. Okay, so you can only create a building pad if you have a top of surface. That's why make sure you create the top of surface. Okay, so the building pad is here. So this is where you create your building. That's why it's called building pad. So I'm going to select the building pad here. All right. So let's say, for example, I'm going to use again some distance here. Or you can just create a rectangle if you want. Okay, so how about I use the peak lines option again. So let's say for this one, I'm going to offset this uh, 25 feet. Oops. So 25, okay, so 25, okay, and then 25 here as well, and then 10 feet, okay, so 10 feet here, 10 feet here, okay, so, and then I'll just use trim extend to corner, okay, there you go, there you go, okay, all right, and then I'll just, finish this one. You can also specify here the offset from the current level. So as you can see, our current level is level 1. If you want to offset below or above your pad, you can change it from here. Alright, so let's say, for example, I'm going to change this to 2 feet, minus 2 feet. So it will go down minus 2 feet from level 1. So I'll apply it, and then I'll just finish edit mode. There you go. So in 3D view again, so this is how it looks like, you see? Now, if you want to change this one, just click that and then just change this one. So let's say you want that to be five, 5 feet. And there you go. See? Okay, so that's how you create your building pad. And then your building pad also has a detail. So maybe in the examination, it will ask you to create the building pad and then it will tell you to create or, or to check out the perimeter of that or the area or the volume. 
Okay, so this is where you can find it from the properties if you select the building pad. Okay, so after that, since let's say for example we are just on the conceptual design, so we just want to create here a uh, conceptual model, okay, conceptual mass, just a uh, visualization. So to do that, I'll just go back again to site, and then from the conceptual mass, I'll just create an in place mass. So I click that one. And then I'll just put here a name. Okay, so it's up to you. You can just put any name. And then after that, just select OK. And then after that, you'll be able now to use these tools to create some visualization or conceptual modeling. So let's say I'll just create a rectangle here. So I'll just create one here. For example, this is where I want to place one building. Just like that. And then select modify. The next thing is... You select that chain of lines and then you can create a solid form on that one. There you go. So in 3D view, check this out. So this is now how it looks like. Okay. So you can click that one. You can pull that. Okay. Then you can add more. Okay. You can you can you can select that one and then else you can rotate it if you want like that then you can copy copy that you can put one here okay for example for this one just don't forget to finish by the way just finish it okay so now you know you now have two building so let's say that's that's the one okay if you want to edit the building just select again the building edit in place okay Let's say for this, so you want to move that one there, okay, and then just finish it, okay? And then you can add more, so like um, click again the massing inside, in place, you can put another one or just edit the mass. Just select the mass, edit it, edit in place, and then you can add more, like for example, I have a circular building here. There we go. And then select that. Convert to solid form. And then finish. In 3D view, this is now how it looks like. Oops. I think I haven't specified how this one will look like. Solid form. Extrude. Okay. Then, like for example, there you go. And then just finish it. There you go. So basically, this is how the uh, conceptual modeling works. That's how you create or that's how you start up your site plan. Okay. That's how you create your uh, property line, your top surface. Okay. Which is very important during the examination because this is part of the examination. Okay, so the, the intent is to have the framework of a model that could potentially be used for schematic design, design development, and eventually construction documents. Right, so hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.